It's like that old saying, all things must come to an end. Greetings viewers, my name is Chris. Welcome to Driven Gears Automotive. We got two new topics that we're gonna talk about here on Car News about the last production of the 2024 Chevrolet Camaro and possibly we're gonna get a brand new um, Subaru Crosstruck Wilderness, which could be added to the Wilderness family. Um, will that be in production by 2023 to, or maybe 2024? Are we gonna see that come to life? So let's talk about here on Car News. We got two new stories that we're gonna talk about. So let's get started with the new video. So oh, there are images going around of the new 2024 Camaro that's actually being assembled and planning out the phasing process of building. Um, by January 2024, they expect the new generation of the Camaro to roll out of the assembly plant of GM by early January 2024. The automator confirmed late March, which is right now. Um, I can't really say that Camaro is considered dead. If you kind of read on what they're actually doing, what they're processing the Camaro right now, um, yes, it is considered that it's the 24 being the last production of the new Chevrolet Camaro. Um, after nine years of the current six gen Chevrolet Camaros, um, they're no longer gonna be in production after 2024 with the new generation. Um, it's because of sales have been tanking down with GM and the Camaro for the longest time for the past um, seven to nine years of production between the Camaro. The generation six has come seeing some tanking sales of the Camaro. Um, 21,000, um, almost 22,000 Camaros have been sold by 2021 into 2022, the year of 2022 kind of saw a little rebound about 24,000 which is that's only a 3,000 change but behind that but again it's because of taking sales and um ford right now as well um i don't know what their production with the mustang are they gonna keep going with the mustang or maybe or maybe not um because i've seen how they are seeing in sales with the Mustang as well. It's slightly better than the Camaro sales. So it's Dodge. But if you look at the Mustang right now, they have a spinoff, which is a kind of a, a great value ripoff, being a full electric Mustang called the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Are we gonna see in the future that they're gonna take the Camaro and have a SUV full electric variant of the Camaro which I think it's kind of ridiculous that they're gonna make the muscle car or the sports car lineups into full electric SUVs and just stamp the badge of a Camaro and make it into a four door or maybe a sports car, well, um, a sports car SUV or something or um, just a full on SUV and just stamp the name on it. Like they did it with the Mach-E, they stamped the Pony logo on there and they just put it as a Mach-E Mustang the all electric SUV, I think it's just like, oh, the government's always trying to say, oh, we want to go green, we want to cut down emissions, we want to do all this stuff. I mean, you can't convince people to go full electric. No one will ever convince otherwise that making you guys full electric is not gonna help anything. I mean, the superchargers that we have for batteries are still running off, um, emissions they're running out of you know they're running off of um fossil fuels like coal natural gases or um yeah oil but that's how they charge up these superchargers to have your electric electricity to fill up your electric vehicles and lithium production isn't clean it's more dirty than it already is and they're just putting you know, taking these sports cars and these muscle car lineups and rebranding them as, you know, full on electric vehicles. And, you know, it's just not the case right now. Um, they are looking at that. But again, by 2024, they're going to stop the production of the Chevrolet Camaro. It's because of declining sales and the lack of GM's quality with their vehicles. Hey, boy.
Hey boy. Hi. <laughs> So not that long ago, we actually saw the new 2024 Subaru Crosstrek, new redesign for the new generation of the Subaru Crosstrek for 2024. And trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of the new front fascia design that they put for the new Crosstrek. I always do love the older style of the Crosstreks for the previous generations, but I'm just not a big fan of that stuff. And they put new technologies, more upgrades and more stuff. But what people are always wondering, well, seeing the pictures of it makes it kind of look closer to the wilderness. Are we gonna get the Subaru Crosstruck wilderness that we've always been wanting? Well, cause we already have the Subaru Alpac wilderness. We already have the Subaru Forester wilderness, but where is the Subaru Crosstruck wilderness that we've always been wanting? Since we actually seen the 2024, people thought, hey, this might be a wilderness but it's just a standard model of just a regular base model limited or um, just uh, the same cross that we've been getting, but which is a redesigned front fascia for a new generation. And they, if we're gonna keep the same front fascias forever, there are vehicles that they're gonna keep changing for the new generations of the Outbacks and the Foresters and all that stuff. Um, new York Audio, Auto Show, Seems pretty obvious that there is a new Crosstrek Wilderness going to be presented at the New York Auto Show. Um, the BRZ Wilderness is going to be another wilderness model, but again, the BRZ is a sports car. It's a rebadged Subaru GR86. Basically, but you're going to get a Subaru BRZ. It's the same thing as a GR86, but they're going to transform it to a wilderness. It's very unlikely because it's a sports car. It's a rear wheel drive vehicle. They're doing it for the all wheel drive vehicles. Most, most of the Subarus are four, are four wheel drives or all wheel drive systems. Most of them, all of them are all wheel drive systems, but the only thing that's left is the BRZ being a rear wheel drive. So I don't know how unlikely that will be for a wilderness to turn the BRZ into the same trim design. Um, I do want to see the Trostrek with the claddings and all that stuff, kind of keep the same generation design, but just kind of put cladding and put the wilderness touch to it. You know, the, the trims, the bulkier tires, the Geolander Yokohamas, um, kind of make it more lifted, more rugged, um, kind of put a little bit more oomph to the engine you know, more torque and that stuff because the Wilderness has more torque than the regular base model, normal Outbacks and the Foresters. So they have more the oomph they want to give it because it's more, the Wilderness was designed because people love the outdoors. They love to have an adventure. So that's why they built it because, well, as for the people that want to take it on off-roading trails, some really cool terrains um, like going rock climbing or whatever it is that they're doing, going camping or something like that. People enjoy that stuff. That's why Subaru took the attention and say, let's turn these base models into a lifted, um, rugged vehicle that people will love. And yes, they love these vehicles. I have my own Subaru Alpha Wilderness. I've mentioned that a couple of times. I've reviewed that before. I love that vehicle so much. I've took it to the mountains a couple of times in the summer. But that thing handles like a dream. And um, yeah, take it on, you know, very hard, harsh trails up in the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, I mean, that thing is a dream to be in because it's so, you know, it's what you want for a off-road vehicle. It can take you on big adventures anywhere, you know? Um, but yeah, they're gonna, I don't know what they're gonna do with the Subaru Crosstrek. I don't know, I don't have, um, I don't have a say right now. I just say, well, kind of just redesign, you know, put the whole trim levels. I just want to keep their, um, you know, just to keep their same look they have for the previous gens, but just kind of put more of the cladding, lifted, more ruggedness, more aggressive. You know what I mean? Um, just keep it as it is, you know, just keep the cross truck as it is. But the 2024, it just, I don't know, like, maybe it might grow on me. I don't know. Because I just do love the old Crosstrex, actually. You know, the same body style, the same power, 
I mean, yes, I mean, we'll get 40, 152 horsepower. I, I get that, that's very slow, but nobody likes fast cars anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, people love, you know, better fuel economy, you know, better safety. Yeah, I mean, that's some new upgrades for the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek. Will for the new 2024 Subaru Crosstrek, not the Wilderness model. Um, I don't know how that will look like, but, you know. Um, there's going to be some X mode features for the Forester in the Outback Wilderness, you know, for more, you know, more production of that, more upgrades to the, to the X mode. Um, snow and dirt mode, that's going to get more features to that, a more grip. Um, yeah, I want to see some more to that, more aggressiveness. But I do want to show you something what they released in Japan, because I know, like, Japan is more ahead of the Subaru of the United States. Um, Subaru USA is kind of more behind of Subaru of Japan. Um, I do want to put an image right here. Um, but I do love the new design that I have the Subaru of Japan, what they kind of have put in their auto show with the new Crosstrek. I do love the how rugged it is. You know, I do like the light bars, the stick on thing, side panels. I do love it. And this is kind of what we're teasing on, what the wilderness will be like for the cross treks um but i don't know um subaru of america i don't know what they're gonna probably do they're gonna like, like tweak it a little bit but i know like you know most of the parts come from are built in japan but they're manufactured here in lafayette indiana um yeah that's in the plant over there in the united states um yeah i know like mo yeah most everything is assembled in japan but now they're taken to the United States, to Lafayette, Indiana, to get re to build the whole thing. But just a little tweaks on stuff that Subaru of Japan has compared to here in Subaru of America. But I want to see it a design like that for the wilderness because look how aggressive and off roady it looks. Like the Geolander Yokohamas, um, the the LED light bar, the light bars on top. Um, you know, weight capacity on top of the the bars, 3,000, 30, I think 30, between 30,000 30, to 3,500 pounds on top of the roof rails. Um, but yeah, I want to see something like that, more of that tough ruggedness of the Subaru Crosstrek. Um, hopefully, I, I just think it was, I just think it should have came out sooner with the family of the Wilderness models, but you know, it's, Subaru is just a, it's a small company and uh, Toyota has a little bit of stuff in that, you know, kind of contribute to that. But I just want to see how the Crosstrek Wilderness will add up to the Wilderness family. Does it deserve the respect it's going to get when it comes out? You know, let's just see. Whenever it comes out, whenever it's unveiled, let's see. I might do a full video about the unveiling, I'll talk about my opinions about it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching the episode of Car Talk. I'm your host, Chris. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next Driven Gears Automotive video. Bye.